to again, church family, and we're back with our character studies from church history. And uh, David, I'm excited to talk about who we've got today. Tell us who we're looking at. So today we're going to be looking at Polycarp of Smyrna. Polycarp of Smyrna, he was actually the pastor of one of the churches that John the Apostle wrote to in Revelation 2. And what's interesting about Polycarp is he was actually a personal student of uh, the Apostle John. Uh, a few things to note about Polycarp is uh, if you would ever read his writings or anything, it w it, almost every other phrase was a reference or quote to scripture, which shows that he was a devout student to the scriptures. He loved reading God's word, and I think that's super important for us to know. Uh, he was also known as a really well teacher, not just in Christian circles, but in non-Christians around. They would say, oh yeah, Polycarp, that guy, he's a great speaker, he teaches well, uh, and he's just really good with words. So he had this pretty well-respected um, life as a teacher and as a Christian, and people knew that he was a Christian too. Um, and he lived uh, for 86-some years um, as a Christian. And so he had this huge lifespan of a Christian. And so that's who we're studying today, Polycarp of Smyrna. So uh, tell us, why is um, Polycarp important to study? Uh, what, what are we going to get from him? Well, uh, I think there's a few things that we can learn from Polycarp. But the main thing that I wanted to take away for us, for our purposes, is that when you look at Polycarp, uh, you see in him what it means to live our lives completely devoted to Jesus. Um, in the account of his arrest, uh, it's pretty cool and pretty fascinating. Out of all the martyrs I've read so far, uh, Polycarp's is one of the most striking to me. Uh, the account has uh, Roman guards coming to his house um, during like meal time, uh, and people say, "Polycarp, uh, Roman guards are coming. Uh, you need to run away." And Polycarp's like, "I'm not going to run." And so when the Romans come to seize him, he invites them into their into his home, creates a meal for them. And he says, you can eat as much as you want. Just give me two hours to go and pray without ceasing. And so this is a really cool thing that like an enemy comes to his house. Um, and instead of running away, he invites them in, prepares a meal for them, and goes to pray. When the, when the Romans uh, brought Polycarp before the Roman uh, government and all that kind of stuff, uh, they said that we didn't want to, they, they didn't want to kill, kill him. And what, what they said was, if you renounce Jesus, if you say that you, do, you aren't a Christian and you don't follow Jesus, we'll set you free. And Polycarp says these fascinating words that, to me, um, out of all the church figures I've read so far, uh, are the, it, it's the most memorable ones to me. Polycarp says this, he says, 86 years I have served Jesus, and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my Savior and my King? And I love that because it would have been so tempting for Polycarp to just publicly say, yeah, I don't follow Jesus, um, and then go back and in his privacy uh, repent and ask for forgiveness. But Poly Polycarp was so in love with Jesus that he didn't denounce Jesus. And that's something beautiful to, for me to think about. Yeah, I think you're really onto something there. Uh, by the way, this is uh, Polycarp of Smyrna. This is not Polycarp of Manesson, who I researched originally and didn't find much material, kind of hard to draw many lessons from him. But yeah, uh, yes, Polycarp would. of Smyrna. Yeah, uh, the intimacy and friendship that he had with Jesus, I think that you're really onto something there. That's a big, big uh, point in his life and, and uh, that he would come to the end of his life. And, and you're right, we, you know, Polycarp would have still gone to heaven if he had said, uh, you know, renounce Jesus or something like that. He would have been forgiven. The work of the cross is sufficient to cover all sin. But uh, his thing is, this is my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would I be disloyal to my friend? Um, he's my savior. You know, he saved me. Uh, and he's my king. And so the, the I love the, the sincerity of that statement. And it just reminds us that this whole thing is about loving Jesus. Mm -hmm and uh, enjoying him. Yeah. So, uh, lessons for our lives today from Polycarp of Smyrna. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of lessons I have uh, for us, but I only chose three for us for our purposes. The first uh, lesson that we can learn from Polycarp's life is to be a devoted student to Scripture. We learned through Polycarp's writings that he was a lover of God's Word, it, and it was through the reading of Scripture um, that it encouraged Polycarp uh, to stand strong in his faith. 
And I think for many of us, uh, if we are devoted to reading God's word, our faith and our confidence in Jesus would be bolstered. And like you said, we would become great friends with Jesus, um, who is our Savior. Polycarp allowed the truth of Scripture to guide him in his life, uh, and he was able to stand fast on God's word, even in the harshest of times. The second uh, lesson I think we can learn from Polycarp is to be hospitable to your enemies. Mm. It's so easy to be hospitable to your friends and people who treat you well, but uh, but Polycarp saw Romans coming to him, and he knew he was going to be arrested, and so it would have been easy for him to run away, but he was going to be hospitable to his enemies. And I think that shows Polycarp's love for Jesus, that he was, that, that when Jesus says, love your enemies, Polycarp took that he was like okay I'm going to love an enemy who I know is going to come and arrest me mm. and it's a lesson that all of us must learn that as Christians we ought to be the most hos- hospitable creatures uh, on this earth not just to our friends but to our enemies mm. and then the last lesson I have for us is to stand firm for your faith the words of Polycarp have gripped me so much uh, to think of all the goodness that God has uh, lavished on me and lavished on you and just everyone. Um, how could we ever betray Jesus? Mm-hmm. And it's a word that I think um, if I would ever get a tattoo, I don't know how long it would be because it's a pretty long phrase, but it would be, he has never done me wrong. How could I betray him? And just to stand firm in your faith, knowing that God has done so much for you and has done so much goodness to you. Yeah. I really like that idea of the hospitable. Um, it's an interesting time to be hospitable right now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're uh, hoarding toilet paper and food and all sorts of things, and yet we're hunkering down. And uh, you know, there is a, a real fear, not so much now, but it, certainly when this coronavirus first broke, that the, the basic necessities of life would be uh, unavailable. Mm-hmm. And so, man, there was just this hoarding sort of, I got to go get to take care of myself and my own. Um, and I know now we're doing social distancing, so, so we can't practice hospitality like we normally would, where we have a bunch of people over to our homes or something like right. that. But I think that the principle of hospitality, of living generously mm-hmm. because God is generous with me, living generously because God loves me and because God cares for me and I can trust him, um, so I'm able to love and, and be generous with other people, um, that idea is, is really cool. Uh, and, and I think that principle is applicable to us today. Do we have a generous outlook, a hospitable outlook on our life, or are we trying to hoard and grab and protect uh, in this time. So that's an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. David, do you have any final thoughts on Polycarp of Smyrna? Yeah, it's not Vanessa. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think my final thought returns to the truth that God has never done me harm mm-hmm. or done any of us harm. I think for many of us, uh, we see a struggle in our life or something happens to us and it's easy for us to blame God or curse God and just abandon Him. But for Polycarp, it was a joy to face death. It was a joy to face um, persecution uh, in, in light of him following his friend. He didn't allow his circumstances to determine his joy, but he let the truth that rings uh, throughout all of scripture to be his guiding light. That God is good and he is worth knowing and following. And I think Polycarp shares with, us, shares with us the truth that God is worth everything and it is a joy in our life to follow him and know him. Yeah. Well, great. Well, church family, join us again next time. I'm not quite sure who we're studying next, but I'm going to try and get the town right before I get the name. All right, see you next time.